Welcome to Ben Busters. This episode is all about the dough. Doug, would you like to talk to him and tell us what we're doing here? Yeah, so the one thing with all about the dough is when you think of dough, we think of wheat. So we want to walk through Ben Buster's wheat edition. And one thing that we're doing here, I know we're out here with Jonah today in one of his wheat fields for next season. Uh, going to talk a little bit about the management there and some herbicide rotational restrictions and things of that nature. So Jonah, uh, explain to me why we chose this field here for wheat as part of the rotation. So we actually took this field off as corn silage for our operation. And just for the timing aspect this year, everything seems to be delayed. This is a great field, obviously, because we chopped all the corn silage, chopped the corn for corn silage. Then we can come in and get it planted earlier. But along with that, we really have to watch, you know, what herbicides we use throughout the season to make sure we don't have any carryover issues because, you know, that's a huge part of it. You know, with especially the dry time we had this summer, we didn't have the moisture. A lot of those herbicides could still be in the soil and be an issue for us. Absolutely. And one of those is atrazine. You know, yeah. any, any corn herbicide premix containing atrazine, Usually weed is out of the equation for that. And I know you've done a good job because we were out here in this field earlier. You know, we walked it uh, just after side dress and it was weed free. So whatever you did there early as far as herbicide uh, was a good call on that. So you can still keep your fields clean, you know, and use the herbicides for rotation to support a wheat crop. Yep. So, and I think it's a good idea and, and to talk about a little bit of management here. I know this field, Jonah, is one that you've also got in the grid sample program you do a good job as yep. far as fertility management here um maybe walk through a little bit uh your decision as far as p and k in the fall and then what your intentions are maybe in the spring if you want to disclose that information if no not. that's fine so actually on this farm or this field right here this the acres we planted to wheat this fall we just went with a straight rate p and k application this fall primarily because we know we remove so much with the straw when we remove it next year um and Let's be honest this year, potassium is extremely cheap. So we went a little overkill. Wheat really needs a lot of potassium, build strong stalks, strong, you know, strong straw, big straw stems or whatever. I mean, that's what we're going after on that. You know, the wheat, we try to grow the wheat, obviously, to pay the bills to make us money. But the straw is really what we're after right. for our operation. We want the high ending, your high yielding wheat, but we really want the straw also. So, you know, we went a little overboard on the potassium application. We ran um, a little over 200 and some pounds of, you know, potash on this ground which already has really good potassium levels, and we know that. Uh, phosphorus levels, again, are pretty high on this ground. Because the cattle finish barn is, like, right over there. Somewhere. Yeah, we're right here next to the cattle <laughs> barn. Um, you know, we're only, like, you know, a couple hundred yards away. So, you know, the phosphorus levels are pretty high. But we're growing a crop that we're going to manage just like we do all of our other crops. And we're going to really go ahead and dump the fertility onto it because this is my dad's ground. If we own it, you know, it's going to be here for a while, and we're not worried about that. Um that's fertility in the fall, you know, you know, also we put some sulfur down with it, just elemental this fall. You know, that's what we had available. That's what we use. In the springtime, we're going to come back across with obviously the nitrogen and some additional sulfur, of ammonium thiosulfate in the spring, like we normally do. Make a couple passes of nitrogen, a couple passes of sulfur in the spring. And then we'll go and pull tissue samples in the spring also and see if we have any additional needs for maybe like a um, potassium thiosulfate. We've used that before when we're not getting the uptake that we want through the root system. Yeah. So. And the potassium piece is extremely critical. And like you said earlier, you know, we're standing here. This was a corn silage field. Yep. So when you think about the crop removal of potassium and corn silage, it's huge. Yep. Um, I think it's around eight pounds per ton. So and you were mid 20s, mid 20s. So yep. we removed a tremendous amount of K with the corn silage harvest. Yeah. So even though you got good soil levels, keep in mind that you're going to deplete them quite a bit with the corn silage wheat rotation, because both of those crops and the way you're doing it, are going to remove the whole plant both times you do that. Exactly, yep. So, yeah, I think one thing to keep in mind, you know, a lot of times we deal with, with weed as following soybeans, and a lot of times soybean herbicides, you know, are very forgiving in the, in the rotation restrictions as far as your uh, group 14s, group 15s, and things of that nature. So, Doug, what, I'll let you talk on it. You have a lot of guys, and you personally raise weed also. Um, talk about, you know, the importance of seeding depth, you know, the treatment on the wheat seed, what we're using. I know what we did, but what are you, like, what's some things that you're using? What seeding rates are you wanting guys to plant at? So our our higher yielding wheat, uh, generally for the guys that are really trying to push that 100 bushel, 100 plus in that range, you know, we have to have a seeding rate around a million and a half. That's where we realistically need to be, in my opinion. Um, sometimes we've gone higher, and it depends, you know, as I know you do a lot with your wheat varieties and selection and standability. You know, sometimes if you if you go over a million and a half and you've got a, a wheat variety with a lower standability score, 
it's going to be a disaster, especially with the amount of nitrogen that we're putting on these things trying to drive yield. And even though we do spoon feed it in different segments, but I think, you know, to the seeding depth piece, you know, it seems to me when we walk a lot of fields, wheat goes in the ground in several different fashions. It goes, you know, there's guys that broadcast it and vertical till it. There's guys that drill it. There's guys that use a 15 inch soybean planter with wheat discs in it. And it seems like at the end of the day, if we get the moisture, some of that isn't super relevant. But a lot of times, um, you know, we've seen wheat planted at three inches and do just fine. We've seen wheat broadcast on top of the ground and do just fine. But for me, you know, my preference obviously is a grain drill with like an inch and a half. Gotcha. Where are you at with this here? Inch, inch and a half. Obviously a yep. drill, you're not super cons consistent, but you just try to get the happy medium in between those yep. two. What I know with us, we use Warden 360 as a seed treatment. Um, more of a premium seed treatment, has the plant growth regulator or sand already built into it. We know we see that as a critical component, obviously, too, because if we've been dry, this wheat's been in the ground for almost two weeks and it's just now breaking through yeah. because we haven't had any moisture to get it out of the ground. We're also cooling down. You know, we want this wheat to get moving as fast as we can going into winter, get a good root system developed. And that's part of why we're using the seed treatment we're using. Um, do you want to speak on that of, you know, why? I guess to me, with Warden C3, Warden Serials 360, that's generally what we've used. I know it's an improvement over the traditional Warden Serials program that we had used in the past. You know, good seed treatment. Uh, sometimes you ask this seed to lay here for quite a while, mm -hmm. you know, and you don't want it to be exposed to disease and insect pressure and things of that nature. But predominantly, the disease piece is what we're after with the Warden uh, Serials 360 piece. And I think for us, <laughs> if we're going to get to that high end yield, that's where we need to be with the good treatment. And I haven't done as many studies on wheat seed as I have with soybeans. Gotcha. As far as high end treatment. So. Yep. Well, um, I think that's pretty well all we had to talk about on that. I mean, we'll have a lot more to talk about come springtime and what management practices we're doing in the spring, you know, tissue sampling this wheat and other things along with that. Uh, one final thing I think that we should talk about, you know, as we get later in October, you know, we're getting kind of late now. We're middle of October. I always get that question. Hey, Jonah. Doug, you get it too. Hey, Doug. Guys, we're getting late. What should we do about the seeding rate? Do we keep it at one and a half million? Do we jack it up a little bit? What do we do? I'm going to lean on you for that one. I consider you the weed expert. Well, I don't know that I'm an expert, <laughs> but I always tell guys, you know, we as we get later, you know, we do need to raise that seeding rate up a little bit. Similar to what we do with soybeans. Yes. Yep. Based off the calendar, increase that rate. Yeah. And we have a lot of guys, you know, who are just now starting to plant wheat, not because of any fault of their own, but we had this whole calendar year shifted back on us, you know, with the late planting, you know, late harvest. It's cool. It's what, you know, now we're cool and dry, but I mean, we finally got some moisture last night, but, you know, increase the seeding rates a little bit. You know, some of us are going up to about 1.7 million per half, you know, we have to, but the quality seed treatment is still a key piece to this right now. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I haven't got my wheat planted yet. We do have wheat seed ordered. So hopefully with the uh, Lord willing, we get in and get this soybean crop off the wheat. Because our, our, our wheat is obviously going to be following soybeans. But hopefully we get all this taken care of here in the near future. But we'll see what Mother Nature says. We got rain, rain last night. We got rain Monday. We got rain again a couple of days after that. But it's just small amounts, two tenths, three tenths, enough to really mess with the combining of soybeans for a little while so we'll exactly. see hopefully i get it in because you know if i can beat you in corn and soybeans i'd like to be in wheat too you're kind of well, you're, you're kind of on the throne right now for the wheat thing because i didn't raise any last year well the beans i think you're gonna have a hard time beating me last or started the field yesterday and it's looking really shiny so that's all i gotta say we'll see you should Hopefully. If it wasn't for a little bit of equipment malfunction and uh, rain last night, I'd have a number for everybody today, but I'm not going to say it until we're done. So This equipment malfunction you speak of, I thought that didn't happen with a green combine. They all break. <laughs> I'm sure my time's coming too. So. I can't wait for the day. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll catch up with you guys next time. See ya. You know, you, you talk a little bit about me raising wheat. It's it's limited for me. <laughs> yeah. We do we don't we don't raise it as much. It kind of gets in the way of the the, uh, the hay making and the summer family vacation schedule. And you know me, hunting season, family vacations, important, important very important. Stuff. Yeah. So we gotta we gotta make sure we work around that.